Oh my god. <laughs> That's just really bad. That's really awful. <laughs> don't hate don't don't hate me. I tried. I <laughs> don't hate me either. Okay, let's see yours. Tracy Shearer, welcome to the <laughs> Uniweb interview show. <laughs> My name is Matt Whiteside. I'm the host. Tracy, thanks for joining me and making fun of my tiny light. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's it's an A for effort. I I'm just gonna hold it like up here this whole time. Is that how it's I should do it? Is that better? I think your arm's gonna get tired. Super strong. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Tracy? How are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Ain't no problem. I'll stop doing this. Sorry. It'll, yeah, it's your phone's crazy. actually match your poster in the background there for a second. Oh, yeah. I didn't even... See? <laughs> That's pretty cool. That was I, pretty love, awesome. I love that poster. Yeah. I've got my whole room is decorated with it, stuff like that. Oh, cool. So, Tracy, this is about you, not my bedroom. <laughs> Let's be serious. No, but you're very entertaining, though, right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. So Tracy, you are a writer, and also you are becoming a inspirational life coach. Is that correct? Correct. Wonderful. <laughs> I would, I would love to it's hear so about. Which, I would. Hello, hello. I would. <laughs> my interview skills are very good. I would love. <laughs> I would love to hear about your writing. So you're writing your first book. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, it's the first book I'm going to publish, but it's not my first ever book. Um, oh, okay. My first book um, is when I ended up getting an agent for the first time uh, okay. and then ended up coming into this journey now where I'm going to be self-publishing. But um, yeah, I started I started uh, really focusing on writing. I uh, always thought I had time, and then I ended up losing my job, getting cancer, and my mom died all within a four-month period. Holy crap. And I went, I don't think I can take anymore. You know, I think that's, that's like, I have my max. Done. And yeah. I'm done. And then all of a sudden I went, oh my God, I don't know how much time I have left. Because at the time I was given 50% chance to live. Oh my gosh. Wow. And then I went, you know what? I'm going to be the 50% that lives because it was a really rare form of cancer. And now it's been 10 years later, which has been, you know, wonderful for my last, last yes. time I had an incident. Uh, but it really made me focus. And so I went, you know what? We really have to pursue our passions now because we don't know how much time we have. So started to really take writing seriously, took the writer's program at the UW, um, ended up meeting my uh, agent at a local writer's conference. Um, just, you know, it's amazing when you're faced with a life or death situation, how it really refocuses you. And that's one of the things I want to help with the writing life coach piece is, helping people explore their dreams and don't wait, you know, really do it now. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. I had no, <laughs> okay. So I, I don't, and I love doing this because I truly have no, like, I don't know a lot about the people I interview. That is incredible. That So over 10 years ago, you were diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, 50% chance to live. And you also lost your mom, lost your job. All this stuff happened to you, and you said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this way." Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. And um, my cancer uh, that ten years ago was the last time I had an incident, but it actually came back two other times. So it was wow. really scary. I thought, you know what? I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Um, and I just kept on believing, and just you know, your state of mind is so important during those things. 
And uh, the 10 years ago was um, the last time I had an incident and had radiation and stuff. And then I've been going for checkups since. But it's like it just further emphasized why, you know, we need to um, take those steps forward to our dreams now because something can hit you out of the blue. It was totally rare, non-hereditary, just came out because it came out. You just never know when those things are going to happen. That's amazing. I want to get into get into that because there are those 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 things that happen in life that we don't we don't ever foresee coming, and we've yeah. got to make a decision. Um, but doing it without ha- like this, I feel like the secret to life, and it's not even a, really a secret. It's just like <clears throat> something that it's so hard for us to grasp. If we just start doing the things that light us up every day, yeah. how much better our life gets. And you were laughing like crazy in the beginning, <laughs> and I love that. Because I think laughter is like one, of, like honestly, the best medicine for the human spirit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Has this um, has your experience? I mean, I can't imagine it not transforming into your writing or being poured into your writing. What is the book that you're writing now about? Yeah, so the book I'm I'm writing now is <clears throat> it's a women's fiction with a paranormal vibe. So my little tagline that um, that worked at the conference was. There's a hunky 18th century ghost, because, you know, all ghosts have to be hunky in these books. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's a modern day serial killer. Oh. And three strong women trying to repair a childhood friendship. Wow. Yeah. So it's got all these different aspects. And I think as as with every writer, part of who you are and part of Um, what you're working through and the issues that you're exploring come into your book. And so in this book specifically, um, I deal with the fact that I've created a ghostly realm called Entwine, and that's what the book is called. And it's all about the theme, how we're all connected, living and dead, um, people that come into your life and leave your life, and how we're all kind of part uh, together and entwined. And I think that now my dad's gone as well. So the death of both my parents and that whole thing of missing people and how they're still connected with you that fed into this. Um, and then also my version of what I think maybe things could look like in the ghostly realm. And then also about friendships, because I think that's something that everybody can empathize with. We all have people that uh, we were really close to that maybe we've lost their friendship or something has happened or there were misunderstandings. And I explore in this book um, the, the situation where as long as there's love, there's always hope to rebuild that. And so that's one of the the main themes and why it's more of a women's fiction than, say, a paranormal romance, because it's about these women and how they're trying to not necessarily get back what they had when they were kids, but build something even stronger together. Yeah, and by practicing love with one another and, and figure out the... So the, the go, you said a ghost realm called in, Entwine. Okay. So I want to... <laughs> is this... Have you... I, I posed a question out on Twitter... Um, a little while back, it was like a week, maybe last week, about uh, do you believe in ghosts? Is this something that like I, I, that you see or that see you, you see come into your actual in your real life, like interacting with um, spirits that have passed or people that have passed? Yeah, um, I actually did. Um, there's a local ghost conference here in Seattle um, at in Port Gamble. And I've gone to it a few years in a row, but this last year, the previous year um, uh, time I went, I had some experiences. Okay. <clears throat> there was some, we did an experiment in one of the most haunted houses there, uh, the Walker Ames house. And I picked up on something that other people had picked up on. So I was like, okay, how did that happen? And then this ne- next time I went, um, I was in the same house and had some experiences. And I remember touching a fireplace because it seems like, one of the things that I have is psychometry, which is where you touch an object and you can pick up the history or what's going on. Uh, And so I was touching this fireplace and I had this image in my head of a little boy that was skipping a brown hair singing ring around the rosy. And so I was like, okay, so I wrote it down. We're all writing our stuff down. So we're in there sharing our experiences and this woman pipes up and she goes, well, when I was in the other room by the fireplace, um, I saw this little boy skipping and singing ring around the rosy. And I was like, oh, Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, I just got goosebumps, I was like, man. That's. I was like, <laughs> and then um, I was at in another house, and we were talking. We were trying to get this little girl to come and talk to us, and my arms were both down at my sides, and I felt like this, like buzzing around my fingers, and they're like, hey, "Does anybody feel anything?" And I'm like, "I'm not gonna say anything. This is kind of weird. Never felt this, but I'm not gonna say anything." 
And then they kept on pressing. And I'm like, well, I kind of feel like somebody's trying to hold my hand. And, the, and my friend across from me goes, oh, I feel that too. She's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think that, um, I think I definitely have some sensitivity to that. And I, <clears throat> and I do believe that, that my mom and dad are watching over me. I believe that people that have passed on that we love, th that's my belief. Everybody's got their own beliefs, but I believe that they're nearby watching over us and that they're still accessible. Yeah, I think that too. I um, yeah. I had this conversation with a friend. Wouldn't it be weird if like, what if we were the ghosts and we didn't even know it? And they're like, <laughs> I mean, just because of different dimensions and like, if you think of radio waves or microwaves, we can't see those things, but we know that they're working because they have certain impacts on their, they create heat or whatever it is. Um, it's just another frequency yeah. that we can't see basically. But I think more, so there are certain people who are more in tune with that frequency than others. Um, did was this something you've always felt like, or was this something that came along after um, your your battle with cancer and and the loss of your parents? You know, um, <clears throat> that's a great question. I've always felt it, but I never really put much credence to it. I was like, meh, you know, and then <laughs> it's like I always kind of feel a little bit of something, but. <laughs> but I never explored it, you know, and yeah. it was, and I feel like, and I don't know if this is a, the right way to put it, but I feel that once you focus on it and you're more open to it, all of a sudden you're getting more like this, this last time I went to the conference, I was getting a lot more just coming in where I could feel more things. And it's more, um, uh, I think a lot of it also too, I picked up, um, a lot of emotional energy. So I was in one room and I just was almost sobbing. Wow. And I could feel that somebody had had lost a child. Wow. And it was really interesting. And so what's what's cool, though, is that one of my characters in my book <clears throat> and in the second book of the trilogy can pick up things from touching objects. So I'm using what I'm kind of feeling and the stuff I'm learning about to help infuse her character with more, you know, what people really do. And so that right. was kind of fun. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that I could like pick up stuff like that. And I'm writing a character about it. So it's like, who knows? Maybe my subconscious was like, you know, having me write it in there. Yeah. And talk about uh, <laughs> writing in flow, right? It's like you just kind of get into a in, a in a way and just write that stuff out. It, talking about your characters. So there's three main characters, three women. Yep. Right. Um, and they're interacting with the spiritual world during this time. What are the names of your characters? Yeah, so the, the character in the fir first book, um, who's the main lead, because um, I'm going to have a trilogy with each of the women, and then everybody stays throughout. Um, so the first character is Sam, uh, Samantha, and she sees ghosts, uh, but she turned her back on her ability when she was around 13 when her parents died in a car crash and she couldn't see them. And she didn't want to see any more ghosts again if she couldn't see the ones that she loved the most. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the second character, uh, Kate, uh, runs a B&B &B in Scotland, and uh, she lost her husband to cancer, has two small children, and her gift is the ability to see the future. And now she can also pick up things from objects. And she's kind of like the heart of the story. She's the one keeping the friendship together even when it was kind of fracturing. That's um, kind of interesting that she's keeping it together because she's like kind of the bridge between the future and the past, right? Yep, exactly. And manifested yep. in her powers. Yep, That's yep. Cool. And then um, the third character, Beth, um, she can find anything. That's her ability. And she's got her own reality show. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she's always like, I'm Beth she's Marshall. A <laughs> she's a superstar. Yeah, she's, she's, and people are always like, oh, are you? And she's like, well, yes, I am. I am Beth Marshall. You know, and I'm like, oh, God, she's so full of it. But I love it because she's the most damaged character out of all three. Um, her parents used to use her to um, steal things because uh, she could find anything, right? So they right. they they used her that way, um, and so she's had a really kind of checkered past, and it's really fun because she's aspects of me and my damage, just like all the characters are aspects of me in different ways. That's so cool. That's yeah. got to be really. Um, so you're working on book two right now. Book book yeah. one is done. Yep. It's going to be self published later this year. Correct. Do you, do you have a date? Um, already picked out? Well, I know that I want to do um, the Pacific Northwest Writers Association conference is coming up in September, and I know I want to have an autograph table there. So what I'm trying to do is see if I can get it um, all finished up, say maybe around May or June, 
I'm uh -huh. having a friend of mine work on the cover. I've also been looking into all the different, um, like who do I want to go with um, for the e-publishing side, um, maybe the book print side, because if I want to try to get into a brick and mortar, uh, like an independent yeah. bookstore, you have to have certain parameters. And so it's really interesting looking at the business side because, uh, you know, usually it's all creative when you're a writer and you're not thinking about the business. But if you can think about the business, it really helps, especially if you're going to self-publish and try to do it right. Yeah, and that's the hard. The thinking about the business side is really like, that's where it all comes out. Like we can, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, we can have the greatest ideas, but some, what I've realized is even the worst idea and the worst story can make somebody the most famous person in the world if it's executed properly. And execution in business is key to key to the success. Um, that sounds awesome. I want to talk about book two in just a second, but first. We've got a game break, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who have not watched the show before, this is a game break. We, uh, I have random games that Tracy <laughs> has graciously said that she's going to play. I forced her into playing <laughs> with me. <laughs> First game. She doesn't know. First game is... 20 questions lightning round. 20 questions lightning round. Okay. In this game, you have 20 questions to answer as fast as humanly possible. First thought right, Tracy. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully, this will allow people to get to know you better. Okay. Are you ready? I I'm ready. Favorite sound? Raindrops. Favorite person? Uh, my cat right now. Favorite sport? <laughs> Writing. Favorite food? Uh, wine. Favorite song? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, confident. Favorite movie? Uh, the Mummy. Name of your first name of your first love. That's a good movie. Sorry, I won't make faces. Name of your first love. I'm just at the original with Brendan Fraser. That was a fun I know, one. He was great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, like, what did you say? First love. Name of your first love. Robert. First words. I don't remember. <laughs> Loudest noise you ever heard. Uh, I think it was like a train whistle. Okay. Favorite memory? Oh, um, reading with my mom. Shoes? Uh, boots. Arms? Arms? <laughs> Battleship? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Country music? Oh, um, actually, um, my mom listened to a lot. I'll say Dolly Parton. Fishing? Ooh, I don't like fishing. Roller derby? Oh, um, I can't think of the name. There's Rat City Rollers locally here. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream. Chamoka almond fudge. Beans. Oh, um, uh, Pinto. <laughs> Turtle. Um, Bob. Turtle? <laughs> <laughs> Did... What'd you say? Tur turtle? Turtle named Bob. Bob. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> that was 20 questions lightning round with Tracy Shearer. Was this lightning because I was cracking up, but man, those were fun. <laughs> you can make anything a question. It's true. Just got to be like, question? <laughs> well, could... and you know, what was great about these questions is when you asked my first love and I said, Robert, and in the, my first book that I'm publishing, the love interest is Robert, and I never made the connection. Until just now. Just now. <laughs> See? The psyche, man. Holy yeah. cow! Yeah. That's what happens when you stop thinking. That's True. why I've become so successful. <laughs> <laughs> You're living the dream, baby. The dream, man. It's never thinking. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing that, Tracy. I really appreciate it. 
Well, there will be more games, I promise. Um, <laughs> back to our regularly scheduled program. Yes. So, the second book you're currently working on, right? How, how far along into the second book are you? About halfway through. Halfway through? And yeah. so halfway through the first draft? or uh, No, halfway through the book. So, I'm about, I want to say I'm about like 53, 55,000 words. Okay. And this is like, you've written 55,000 words of it. Yep. Okay. I got you. <clears throat> has, has this one been more difficult to write or is it do you have like a whole outline for all three all planned out and so it's like just filling in the words kind of deal or what's yeah. the process yeah. like for you yeah it's a good question so um do you know the terms um the between a pantser and a plotter yeah mr okay. pants from here. <laughs> <clears throat> right well i'm a planter okay planter. so what that means is that i write like usually the first third of the book by the seat of my pants. Okay. So I know I know how it's going to start. I know what I want the end point to be, and I know some of the main points, but I don't write it out. I just write. And then about a third of the way through, I stop, and I look at everything that I've written, and then I discover new plot points off of that. And I'm like, oh, this came – oh, I didn't even realize that was out there. And Oh, and then this is going over here, and then now I can – and then I plot a little bit more – then I write again, and then I kind of do that the whole way through. And it keeps it really fresh for me. So I discovered a lot of the things I'm working on now came out in that first, like, you know, deluge of the first third of the book by Panzer. So I, I love writing it that way. I have friends that do the outline, and it's just too rigid for me. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. But that's, yeah. that's neat. I've never heard of it doing, doing it like that. I mean, it makes sense. Like, you can do it however you want, right? And yeah. that's a smart way to kind of go about it is as a Panzer myself – I've written a full book, just kind of like let's see what happens, <laughs> and I feel like there's I feel like there's magic in that. Yeah. I mean, there's, like when you're trying to cost, you're like you you kind of go with how it feels, right? Like if I'm yeah, yeah. if I'm writing it, I'm also reading it. Hopefully, <laughs> unless, yeah, well, I would hope so. Unless I'm a complete maniac, and then <laughs> I can see where like if I'm getting bored writing a scene, then I'm like, okay, let's. Move it along. Move it along, Matt. I have a very short attention span, so I feel good about that. But I like the idea of being able to pick out plot points. So you write. So are you at a point now? Like, is this the point where you would stop with the second book and say, "Let's see what else"? Or was that like twenty thousand, thirty thousand words in? Yeah, that was um, that was like um, the about twenty thousand words back. And okay. what I discovered in that is that <clears throat> part of the in the second book. I have a town where there's um, a lot of people that have supernatural abilities. And one of the things that came out of that plot point was how do they keep um, the energetic stuff that comes off from their abilities from being discovered? And so like some plot points came off of that about, oh, they use, you know, these particular devices to do that. Okay. Well, how do they, how do they charge those things? Oh, well, then they have a family over here. Oh, well, but, but one of them is burning out. Oh my God, it's got it over here. You know? So it's, been, it's so fun, and so now it's like that that kind of branched out the whole rest of the book with all the different plot points I'll be hitting, but then there'll be more that come up because all of a sudden a character will come out and say something, and I'll be like, oh. I had a huge download the other day about what, um, I have a forest ghost, um, what he saw happen in the forest and how much he was going to reveal, and I was just, I was washing dishes, and I had to stop and just go like, yes, yes! Sounds I like good. I like you just said you had a huge download, so it was like an image that played out in your head. Call yep. it download. It yep. just came it out of nowhere. The whole thing that came in because I all of a sudden I went, oh my god, somebody died in the forest. Oh, and that was related to oh, but but okay, then how is so and so messed up by it? Oh my god, and then and it was just all playing out in my head exactly what happened. It was really cool. I like that. That's really cool. I haven't heard it called that before. Yeah, that's really neat. Do you have downloads a lot? Um, I do, um, and I have um, a lot of stuff that just. And I think it's because I keep it free. I don't. I'm not rigid with the outline or how a scene needs yeah. to be constructed. So I think my mind reaches out and just kind of starts making those connections. And then sometimes, like I got the entire uh, Kate who um, is adopted. I didn't know the backstory of her family at all, and it just all went and came in. And I went, oh, and then that relates to this over here, and then. That's good. Oh, oh, and people are following the first book are going to discover that. I was like so excited. That's really cool. How do you go? Because I know writing is not all you're doing right now. I mean, you have a full time job as well. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, but no, here, this is why it's amazing to me, because I'm somebody who's like, I, I can only pour myself into one thing at a time. So like if I'm 
doing a, a whole other job and I'm trying to write a book at the same time like that. How do you how do you get into those creative states where while you're still living a full time life? Yeah, um, no, it's a great question, and and uh, a couple people have asked me. They're like, well, what's your what's your thing you do when you sit down to write that gets you all ready? You know, because everybody's got their like, I have to have my coffee cup over here and my salt lamp <laughs> over here, yeah, and the whole, the whole thing, rituals and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I just sit down and write. You know, it's just, it's, I think because I'm focused at work on uh, more analytical stuff and there is some creative stuff because I'm in uh, insurance, so I'm helping with risk management. So I'm asking what if questions all the time, just like you do when you're a writer, right? Yeah. What if, you know, um, so, you know, Bob looks at Sue funny and, and then Sue decides to sue. What if this happens and you start to do this? So I'm kind of in that frame of mind, but I find that because I have to use my brain over here for work. Um, it's just raring to go on the creative side. So when I do sit down to write, it just pops out. I don't usually have writer's block. You're keeping the engine warm all day long. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, <laughs> and I do the automatic starter before I get home. Like, make sure it's warm. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> drops the green flag and you take off. <laughs> yeah. My process and I know, I guess you said you you know you never really feel writer's block. If you ever do, you could try this. It's, it's helped me before. I write, I usually get really upset and I write all the stuff that I'm upset about. Like I, it's basically like a bitching session Yeah. <laughs> and then I get up and I do a really weird dance <laughs> and move around as much as like just the crazy to make myself feel like weird. <laughs> and then I sit back down and stuff comes out. I don't know. I don't, it works though. Yeah. It's well, like I resetting think, my physiology or something. Well, and I find for fight scenes, um, it really helps if I walk. So if I put on my headphones and I go walking and just the, the physical thing of it, I can picture a little bit more of the blocks and the, and the punches and nice. like slipping down and kicking. And you listen into some kind of a uh, fight music, like some techno so, or, or like, something that like kind of like encapsulates the scene. And I can almost see the, the fight moves in relation to what the music's doing. Yeah. And That's so really that, yeah, it really helps me because my first book ever was, um, a vampire story set in Seattle and Russia. <clears throat> there was a lot of fight scenes and like big, like battle fight scenes. And it was really tough for me to figure it out. So a lot of it, I had to actually act out as my character would be seeing it because it was, um, and which vignettes I wanted to show and being physical actually helped with that. Oh, that's so cool. I want to, um, I want to talk about the other stuff you're doing on top of writing. And <laughs> the time. Um, th this, uh, inspirational life coaching thing. You have a huge, huge following on Twitter. Um, something you've been building up, and you were telling me before the inter before I started recording about your boss asking you and just <laughs> you you being inspirational and helping other people. That's how it's how it's happened. So how has this come into fruition for you, and where is it where where is it going? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so when I started out on Twitter and I was connecting with people, I would get a lot of uh, writers DMing me and asking me questions like, you know, I'm really stuck with this, or, you know, I've got a character who I don't want people to know is going going to change into this type of character, but how do I describe this? And so I ended up helping people just that way through Twitter. And then there were a few people that actually sent me their beginning scenes, and I called them and spent time with them on the phone. And one of the guys, and I always remember this, he said, um, you know, spending an hour with you was better than spending, like, you know, a whole day with anybody else on this. I learned so much. And it was wow. just, you know, it made me feel really good. And I realized at that point when I was doing it that I really wanted to give back uh, because it's so hard being a writer and putting yourself out there and putting your soul and your vulnerability and your, like, pieces of yourself out on the page. And so, so anyway, so I decided, I'm like, okay, I want to do this. And then I had to figure out a name. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Because I've got all my other loves. So I've got my writing. I've got the inspirational piece. I got the beauty since I sell beauty products. I have the hair because people are like crazy about how do you curl your hair, Tracy? So I've got to do some videos on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really weird, right? So I was like, what can I do? And then I realized, well, <clears throat> I finally came up with the name Motivated Magic because I feel that we all have the magic inside us. And if we motivate it, there's nothing we can't do, right? Yeah. And so I worked with a gal to help me with my logo. And so uh, my logo has a magic wand, a fountain pen, and then a lipstick. And it's um, inspire, write, beautify. 
Yes. And so it's got all my little aspects to it. And so on the writing life coach thing, what I'm working on right now is figuring out, um, as my friend put it, because I want to do everything, of course. She goes, Absolutely. concentrate on your burger and fries. Burger and fries. Don't think about the shake. Don't think about the chicken sandwich. And don't think about the chicken nuggets. Don't even go there, right? She goes, just concentrate on the core stuff. Yeah. Get your McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. So get your burger and fries done first. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, what I'm uh, what I want to do is come up with um, a little course that'll be a combination with Facebook Lives because I think it's really important to be able to interact with people um, and answer their questions as you're going along, and then yeah. also some printed material and then some exercises. And then also being able to offer the one-on-one -on -one coaching for the people who want me to look at scenes or want me to help them brainstorm or maybe they're stuck or they don't know what to do and kind of offering that up as well. And so I'm looking hopefully to, to launch that sometime. I'm guessing probably about May or June, kind of the same time I was thinking about self-publishing my book. Wow. Where yeah, did, this, so, where did uh, this come from? Um, well, I think um, I kind of feel like I'm here for a reason because yeah. I – I survived <clears throat> and I also had, I didn't tell you this before, but I also had another uh, near death thing where um, I had the opportunity to transfer to our, our New York or California office. And my, I have family in New York. Uh, my sister was trying to get me to move there. My mom was in California, really wanted me to move there. Um, and I decided on California and like a month after I moved, 9-11 happened and we lost 300 people in our office. And I probably would have died there. Holy cow. So I was like, okay, that happened. I survived cancer. I'm kind of like, I think that I'm here not just to have a fabulous life, but also to help other people. And so I really decided this year, I'm like, you know what? I really want to figure out a way to give back and to be that resource for people and to, I don't want anybody to give up on their dreams. I, I really don't. And if I can be that person that believes in them, you know, whatever their, their writing dream is, um, I want to try to be that person. That's so beautiful. I think it really is because I think um, being of service to other people is the highest calling. Uh, at least for me, it is. Uh, yeah. I know that for a fact because uh, I have I've found more joy in helping other people than I've ever found in helping myself. And with the the near death stuff, like I mean, it's it's incredible that you know that you're still here. You survive that stuff, even if it wasn't um like the purpose of you surviving it it's still like it's up to you to to make it make it so right because i mean thank god we're thank god we're alive i know i've had multiple times where it's like i don't know how i made it through and i gotta i need to do something more than just serve myself with the time that's left so that's beautiful yeah it's really cool um you want to play another game <laughs> is it how to raise your yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah it's we're 32 minutes in so it's gonna we did it i think we did it 15 minutes before so okay all right you got your do you have your uh paper oh yes <laughs> freaky shear <laughs> cheap <Yes>, shear <laughs> like you told we're gonna play Draw me a picture. In this game, we have 30 seconds to draw a portrait of one another. I draw you, you draw me. Okay. 30 seconds. All right. You okay, okay if I use red? Are you okay if I use red? Do you have a certain That's color? fine. Red work okay? Yeah, because you, you, my picture's going to be awful. Just... <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. And it just 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 a headshot. We don't need okay. to do a full body. Okay. <laughs> we don't need to be guessing what's going on, all right? <laughs> Are you wearing pants? <laughs> no. I'm not. That's the, that's the secret to my success. Okay. All right, you ready? All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, 
Oh, you have such beautiful eyes. <laughs> You're looking kind of demented in mine. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> oh, I should give you a nose. Whoops. Three. <laughs> Two. <laughs> One. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> That's just really bad. That's really awful. <laughs> <laughs> don't hate. Don't don't hate me. I tried. I. <laughs> don't hate me either. Okay, let's see yours. You want me to show you mine first? Sure. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's You're so, so beautiful. But you got the hair so good. I think I got the hair. <laughs> I was trying to color your lips in, but I didn't have enough time. That was. Oh my god! You're killing me. <laughs> okay, uh, you want I like yours? it. I like it. Let's see. <laughs> I think we're both equally talented at Matt. <laughs> we should really stop writing and just start drawing pictures of people. We should. I'm, I'm moving to the board, I'm moving to the boardwalk. I'm gonna start doing portraits. <laughs> oh like, my! Don't quit your day job. <laughs> What is up? Uh, what's up with that smirk I got on my face? <laughs> I know, what's that funny? I wrote, I wrote it. You look like you're like. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I'm like such a smart ass. <laughs> I must have picked up oh, some of your boy. personality. People are gonna really love watching us laugh our heads off for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, good. Oh, okay. Good stuff. And all the energy so flowing. That was, that was called Draw Me a Picture. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <clears throat> now, back to the back to series. I would like to know. So you <laughs> you have a big time following on Twitter. Is and I, I want to know kind of like what your process is to building a social media presence because for and this is this is true for you know people looking to get published. Publishers look for um, your social media presence. Now I know you've and you had a publisher before, correct? Well, no, I had an agent, so I didn't have you an actual an publisher. Yeah, I got a publishing contract, but I didn't go with them. Okay, so let's talk about that too. Um, let's start from there. Okay. How long ago was that when you got your publishing contract? Uh, January. January of this year. Yep. Oh, well, not long ago at all. Nope. So, it, kind of tell me, because you told me about it before we started recording, but tell us kind of what happened with the publishing contract when you got it. How did you go about getting the agent, and then <clears throat> what happened with the, the contract? Yeah. So, um, I ended up uh, getting an agent on my first ever books. So that was The Vampire Story. And ended up getting an agent. Um, she couldn't sell it because vampires are just oversaturated everywhere. And right. it didn't matter that my book wasn't um, like a Twilight or a paranormal romance. It just, as soon as they saw Vampire, they were like, no. So she said, well, what else do you got? What else can you give me to sell? And so I said, oh, well, I have this, you know, women's fiction that's got these three women. And she's, she said, uh, do you love it? And I said, yeah. And she goes, okay. She goes, Tracy, she says, never write for a trend. Always write for what's in your heart. Because people will tell if you're not authentic. So I was like, yeah, yeah. good advice. So I wrote that. <clears throat> she was trying to get it sold, couldn't get it sold. And then that was at that point that I found out that she'd been taking care of her hubby. He was super ill, so she wasn't really focused. So she ended up semi-retiring and letting everybody go. So all mm -hmm. of a sudden, I had no agent. And I was like, okay, I have no agent. And it was days before the writer's conference. And I thought I was going to just go enjoy myself. And all of a sudden, I had to go, okay, I got to sell myself. I sell myself. Hi. You know, so. Yeah. I went and I pitched to six agents and editors. They all wanted to see it. <clears throat> so sent it out. And then I got a publishing contract from one of the small presses. Um, and it was really exciting because it was the first time. And it was like this validation of somebody wants to publish this. Oh, my God. You know, this is really good. This is good stuff. 
Yeah. And uh, I was like, Gee! and then I looked through the contract <laughs> and there were just so many things that I was like, you know, I, I don't really like this or that. I asked them if it could be negotiable. They said no. And that's what happens with a lot of small presses is they're just trying to, you know, shore it up and make their money. Um, and it was also a five year contract. And I didn't like signing away all my rights because if somebody decided to make a movie out of Entwine or a TV series, maybe years later, I wouldn't get anything. Yeah. And I went, you know, I, I don't know about that. And for some reason, though, it was like all of a sudden, I think unconsciously I needed that validation. And then I went, you know what? I think I'm going to self-publish this. And one of my writer friends, she goes, I think you're in a good position to do that because you have a good social media following. She goes, you're personable. You're not mm -hmm. shy talking about your book. You know, you'll have to do a lot of marketing. Even if you had a publishing company, you have to do a lot of marketing on your own. Um, she's like, you know, <clears throat> I think you could really go ahead and do that. And so... Uh, but yeah, so that's how the publishing contract came about. And they were very super nice people. I have no ill will towards the publishing um, right. uh, group and stuff. It just wasn't for me. Right. Business-wise, it wasn't a yeah, yeah. business decision, not personal. Exactly. So, so you, the, I want to talk about the uh, social media presence. How long, how have you gone about building your presence on on Twitter? Are you, are you, big, are you on Facebook as well? Do you have a... Yeah. Um, I've got to set up a, um, a author page and also a motivated magic page for my life coach stuff. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I, I haven't done that yet. So where I really started and I just did it on a whim, I was out visiting my um, family in New York and I went, you know what, I'm just going to start uh, posting on Twitter because I'd seen some people in some shows. I'm like, oh, no, just post that and stuff. And I started with six followers. Um, and this was probably like a couple years ago. <clears throat> and now I have um, close to 25,000 followers, which was just yeah. you know, amazing. And what I found, uh, the biggest thing was um, being genuine um, for me also to interacting with other posts and other writers and not just being, hey, that looks great, you know, smiley face, actually <clears throat> going, oh, my gosh, I have that, too, or oh, yes, my cats are my editors as well, and they sit on my <laughs> stuff, you know, or, oh, here's a picture of La, you know, or um, reaching out, as as I mentioned, where people go, I don't know how to do X, and me helping them and building that relationship. Um, I think when you're genuine um, on any social media platform, that's when you start attracting people because you're showing them yourself. You're not trying to do it for a particular reason. You're just doing it because that's who you are. Yeah, it's so important to do. It's... Uh... Mm -hmm. So do you are you do you have like a pre-sale you're going to set up um, for the book like a pre-order um, that you're going to be putting on your social media? Yeah, yeah, and I can't wait because uh, there are a lot of people that are like, "When is it coming out? When is it coming out?" So I'm like, "Okay, okay, okay, okay." I know, I know. Um, same thing with the writing life coach stuff. I've got people like messaging me saying, "I really, I want to write my memoir and I need help. I want to write this. And I need help. Where's your course?" I'm like, "Ah." <laughs> Trying to I mean, do it's everything. It's a good problem to have, right? It's a great yeah, problem so, to have. I'm the same kind of crazy. I love doing everything, but it's because I remember, I remember going to a therapist one time, and them being like, "Okay, Matt, I want you to put a card. I, I want you to organize your life. Here's most important, least important." They gave me a whole bunch of cards, and all the cards I was looking at was like, you know, family, these, all these interests and things like yeah. everything was uh, was under most important. It's like everything I want to do, everything <laughs> is so important to get done, um, but it's not possible. Hey, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big this cat. my other cat, Feta, who wants to bug my other cat, Cleo. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> it, it was interesting. One of the things that, um, that I always hear of is when you are trying to put out your brand, people always talk about <clears throat> niching down. And only like like separating and segregating out parts of yourself. And I'm like you, though. It's like I wanted something that would encompass all the stuff I love because yeah. that's all me. And it all bleeds over into each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's more rich than, you know, um, like I might have a, I'll have a separate group for the writing program stuff than I would for the beauty. Because in the writing piece, I'm going to I want guys and women. Right. The beauty is probably right. mostly going to appeal to women, you know, so you kind of right. can direct the posts. Yeah, definitely. And um, you, you're working on a website too, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I'm working on a website. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm actually thinking about having my brother-in-law as a comic book artist. And yeah. so I was thinking about having him do like a couple little cartoon things in me. So like maybe one where I'm like with the book or like, yeah. you know, maybe I'm like with some lipstick or, or maybe <laughs> like 
<laughs> inspirational. You know? Wait a second. I could do that for you. I mean, you saw. <laughs> I could take care of that. The cartoon. Oh. No problem. I mean, you saw my art. <laughs> I mean, we could collab. We could collaborate. Hey. Yeah, on... send me info. <laughs> we could... <laughs> Your your website would look super legit. <laughs> it would look like it would look like a a mom's refrigerator, <laughs> like with a bunch of five year olds art all over. Yeah, see, and then I and I could do the smirky faces. <laughs> Just over here doing some stuff, <laughs> and all stick figures <laughs> <laughs> yeah, running around. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just, it's just not... Matt and Tracy. Boop. <laughs> we got all these like funky looking. <laughs> hey, that's what my website's gonna look like. <clears throat> hey, you know what though? You and I could really do like some funny pictures, and then and then put funny captions on the bottom, and do post-it notes. I think. So. I mean, I think there's a huge space for that that kind of art. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like the garbage. There's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of adults doing that kind of artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's untapped, Matt. We really need to do it. Untapped. Well, I'll edit all this out so people don't steal our idea. Yeah, don't yeah. We don't want people to be starting writing stick figures. <laughs> They're be like, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think about that? Genius. <laughs> So I want to know about your inspirations. I want to know because you you want to motivate, inspire people because of the things that have happened to you. But what what was it? What what books? Um, what people? What inspired you growing up? Oh yeah, that's a great um, great question. I think um, <clears throat> I want to say like literature wise for what I try to do in my books um, and was a lot of Stephen King. Loved Stephen King and his care and his character development he could develop people like really fast yeah. um and so um and that that kind of gave my me the love of reading and then hearing all too about his story um and his book on writing is great um and hearing about how you know he just kept getting rejection after rejection after rejection and i think um what always inspires me is hearing all those stories like jk rowling and <clears throat> and stephen king and so many other people and when you're out there and you're doing your own little thing and you're in your little insular bubble of I'm a writer, you know, and you're doing it by yourself sometimes, yeah. um, it, it can be so easy, you know. I love that. Get I get that imagery I just got of a writer in a box going, I'm a writer. It was fantastic. I'm a writer. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> and, you know, um, and I have a writer's group and we've been together. Um, I formed it the first class I had um, and next year will be 15 years. Wow. That we've been together. So we're doing a um, a trip to Scotland. Heck yeah. That sounds really so fun. fun. I know. And then and then once so um, can, can you do the accent? Can you do the Scottish accent? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what once I actually self publish my book, then it's a business expense. Oh yes. Because it's set in Scotland. I need to do research. Show you, you know? show you taxes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, but but if people don't have a writers group and then they don't have anybody to kind of help bounce things off of, and they are in their little bubble, um, and that was one of the inspirations I had for trying to do the writing life coach thing. And then the other piece of it, I think, just the inspiration thing is because um, all too often we don't pay attention to what we're saying to ourselves, yeah. and that's really what you know. So a lot of times, like that sucks. That's stupid. I'm not as good as so and so, and your yeah. your brain hears all that, and so that was one of the other, other reasons why I post inspirational stuff on Twitter, um, because people are doing that to themselves. We're all guilty, and I've had people just out of the blue that I didn't even know were following me will say, "I really needed to hear this today. Thank you so much." Or I'm I'm going through something, and this just you know lit me up. Um, I I know I can do it now, and like you said. It's that amazing feeling. It's 10 times better than anything you could do for yourself is when yeah. you help somebody else. Yeah. Is it, what is it uh, the saying? It's um, it's easy to put somebody down. It takes real strength to be able to lift somebody up. Or, yeah. Or something like that. 
yeah but it, it's it's so true the inspiration um being able to empower another human being to live their dreams like how cool is that yeah i know it's just amazing and it's like and you get um just in the little sway I, w- I always feel like oh, my little birds my little birds flying you know because they're like i can do it i can do it but all of a sudden they're like <laughs> and i'm sitting there going oh, look at them go. you know it's like it's it's just that i think it's the best feeling and i i would love to do that on a bigger scale because i think a lot of times we're always in our own way and we're never reaching for what we want because we don't believe we can get it and if more people can reach and, and live their dreams and do the life that they love, it's going to be a much better world. Absolutely. And because it's a, it's, we start living in a, in a universe, in a world of abundance as opposed to a world in the universe of lack. And it's like, there's plenty of success and love and happiness and joy for every single person out there. Just because one person has, somebody else has, it doesn't mean I can't have it. Right. Like we can all, and that's, that's what I think it is. Like, getting rid of that fear that if this person becomes a great success, that means that my opportunity to become a great success is gone. It's not it at all. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. That is, and I found that too, with um, looking at other uh, writing coaches online, you know, the easy thing to do would be to go, well, oh my gosh, how am I going to stand out? Or yeah. what am I going to offer? That's a little different. But what I've ended up doing is looking at them and going, wow, that's really great. They're offering this. And, and, there's a coach for everyone and I can't coach everyone. Right. So it's yeah. great that there's this huge uh, system out there where they're writing coaches all over the place and each one is going to vibe with people differently and there's room for all of us. And that's the thing. Like if I realize how small I am, right. It's like what humility is. is that I, it's when my the idea of myself matches up with the reality of myself. When I realize that I live in a city, Atlanta of over a million people, if, if just, the people in Atlanta or even like one of the, the the counties in Atlanta were to buy my book, I would be I would I would be be able to make a living as a writer or like or if they wanted any services that I offered, like even a hundred people, like I'd be able to make a living like and there's billions of people on the earth that there's just, there's like plenty to go around, yeah. is all I'm saying. But it, it comes that it have I have to get outside of myself to realize but it's not just me insulated in this little bubble of I have to make it. I have to do it. It's all up. It's all on me. It's all on me kind of deal. Yeah, I agree. That's a, it's a, it's a great way to live. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, um, you know, it, knowing also too, that you have to make the most of every day. I think it's, it's so much better to fill it with the good stuff and try to cut out. I mean, we all do it. I do it too. We all fall into that negativity thing but it's the biggest thing is if you can just kind of pull yourself out of it not let it sit well as writers and you were talking about this um what we tell ourselves we we have the opportunity to write our own story it's like are we writing this terrible memoir about our lives or are we what story are we telling i'm telling myself a superhero story like a redemption story a comeback story like those are the stories i'm telling myself now it used to be like you know the sad sack story the victim story like you'll never make it kind of story and that's unfortunately the way um a lot of society like we perpetuate that kind of mentality um through like you talk about one of your people as a reality tv star but like through television and all that kind of stuff it's all about drama and like horrible things happening people love train wrecks but it's like if you're constantly living in a train wreck your life probably is pretty chaotic yeah well they always talk about um the fact of you know you retract what you're focusing on yeah you know so like the people at work i know who who um or that i've interacted with that are, are constantly in drama are usually seeking drama right but not us not us <laughs> not me man <laughs> i used to like crazy yeah. but not, it's a it's a much more peaceful better way to live when you're just uh starting like you're talking like you were talking about just doing the things that fulfill you instead of doing the th- you can be you can be filled up by eating a big sandwich but like <laughs> i'm talking about that stuff that fulfills me to where it doesn't matter like everything is good you know yeah yeah like a- i think it's uh i think it's nice and you know and, and i think when you can do even like little things like um i'm gonna form an llc for the publishing company so it's not like 
you know, Tracy share by Tracy share, you know, it's actually right, like, yeah. <laughs> looks like it's published by somebody. Right. But yeah. I was thinking about it. And I went, you know what, I'm going to come up with a name for the publishing company that honors both my parents since they're oh, both gone. Beautiful. And it's like, that's another way they can live on in the dream with me. And I think even just, if you can do little things that uh, bring you happiness and joy and connect you with those that you love, um, just everything else is going to, the energy you give off, what you're attracting, what's filling your life is just all going to be a lot better. So true. Yeah. So true. It's been such a wonderful journey getting to talk to you, Tracy. Honestly, it's been, it's been amazing. I have, I realize we have so much in common before, like I haven't, I haven't had a chance to really interact with you a whole lot on Twitter. Um, but talking to you, I'm like, holy crap, me and this lady have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it. I'm like, we have so much in common um, <clears throat> that I can't wait to be able to interact and talk with you more about what you're what you're doing because I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, um, and I want to be able to. I want I want as many people as possible to know about you and what you're doing. Um, and so, like, I'll obviously I'll put the, your information in the in the description of the video. But is there anything you want to leave the leave the community with the people who watch this? Do you want to tell them before um, I'll let you go? Uh, well, I think, I mean, number one, thanks for having me. This is exciting. This is my, my first ever like little like interview thingy like this. So this is, this is good for me. You'll remember this when you're famous. Yes. Get, get out there. But um, I think the biggest thing to, to leave people with is that um, just, you know, really listen to your heart. Um, someday might never come. Do what you want now. Absolutely. Hey, will you sing with me real quick? <clears throat> sure. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. When it's calling your name. When it's calling your name. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. Do you know that song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty I was good. Thinking for dramatic stuff, you know. It was better than like, uh, you know, write that chapter one more time. <laughs> Ooh, baby, baby. Start doing the hair flip. The words that you use are crap. <laughs> There's something so predictable. <laughs> Is that how it goes? We have a lot in common. We're goofballs. <laughs> oh, absolutely. 100%. You must never see my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's the one thing about having so many so many followers and people I yeah. follow. Like, it is tough sometimes to go through those. Well, yeah. But it's been like, great, so though. I really appreciate it. it. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to do it. Um, well, see you later. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?